Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the new Vario VESA adjustable monitor mount solution from the guys at SimLab. It looks to be an excellent solution for those sim racers who use triple monitors for their cockpit setups. I have always struggled with getting my triples lined up the way I wanted them to. With all the available adjustments on the Vario mounts, could this be the final solution for me to get them lined up as close to perfect as I can? Time to put them through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at the parts that you get in your Vario VESA monitor mount kit from the guys at SimLab. Take a look at this bracket first. These are aluminum bits and they have kind of a crinkle finish. Not even crinkle, I guess, but kind of a matte, grainy type of finish on the aluminum. I believe this is anodization. Might be paint. I think it might be anodized. Now it looks like paint to me. As you can see, there's a little lump here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a little piece there that usually gives it away right around where that threaded hole is. It's got two threaded holes, obviously, at the top. We've got some other holes here, and we have two at the bottom. And we also have some countersunk holes here. Now, this plate is going to be holding these brackets. Now, these are red anodized aluminum bits. Very nicely done, by the way. Kind of like the, the red contrast to black. In fact, it kind of matches the theme of my rig, which has the red seat belts and everything else is pretty much black. But these are going to mount, let me turn this around the right way, on the back of this. And these see these two holes? Well, this diagonal holes here is kind of going to line up there. And like that. And that's how we'd be mounting this. And we're going to have two on each side. But again, I'll be going through the complete assembly process as usual. Now we have these brackets here. Now these are going to be mounting to the profile themselves, kind of sitting here like this. I happen to have a spare piece of 4080 profile. So it's going to be sitting on the top. We'll have some T-nuts going in here. And it'll sit like this. And then this piece will be hanging out here to catch the bottom of this piece. And it looks like we have a hole hanging down here. I'm guessing that's going to be where we have some kind of an adjustment to adjust for angle. So if we have a threaded rod here, we can push it in and out, and that'll adjust the angle of your monitor. I'm really looking forward to using these because I've always had, I've been so close to getting my monitors perfect. And even when I thought they were perfect, after a while of moving it around a little bit, it looked like it wasn't perfect anymore. These also have some countersunk holes in them. So we'll be mounting a bracket on the back of this, and this is the bracket we'll be mounting. And it's going to be holding a little rod. And you see we have four holes in the back of this. And these look like M5s. Again, nice red anodization. Have some, some of it worn off the back here. But of course, it's something you'll never see once you mount it. And this is going to fit back here like this in this orientation. And it's going to catch a rod, I believe, that fits down in, inside of this. So we'll see how, again, how all that goes together once we start putting it together. You also get a lot of hardware. You get a bag of bolts here that we're going to need. There's also some, you can see in there, some T-nuts. And these are the spring ball T-nuts, the good ones. <laughs> so I'm glad to see that they're in there. So it's this is typical, though, of SimLab. Just about any kit I've ever got from them had everything you need in it and then some. Actually, a few extra pieces. We'll be using these guys. They come in a bag of three. And these are some aluminum pins or rods or... Whatever makes you feel good as far as what you call them. They have some nice beveled pieces here, a little chamfered, so it doesn't hang on anything on both sides. And you get three of those because we have three mounts. We get these guys, stuff from running away. We get a lot of these. These are M8 set screws, very, very big set screws. So M8 set screws, I'm not sure where we're going to be using these yet, but I'll find out once we start putting it together. So you get a bag of these, and we get a smaller set screw. This looks to be an M5 to me. We'll get more detail later. But yeah, this is an M5. And you can see it's got the little hex on it there. And you get, it looks like, six of these. Okay. That covers all the hardware bits that we need. So what we'll do next is go ahead and start assembling one of these puppies. So now we're going to start the assembly process. We're going to start with the VESA bracket first. This is the bracket that mounts onto the profile. This is, goes up against the monitor. I want to point out that these there is a, a side that you want to use on this for whatever you're doing. We have countersunk holes here, 
and the bolts will be going through this way and coming out the other side to attach these brackets. And these are little red anodized aluminum bits. And you can see we have some holes here. We got some M5s here. We got them here and we've got an M8 hole, big one there. See the threads in that. And we have kind of a socket hole here. This doesn't have any threads in it. And I'm pretty sure that's probably the same exact hole that's here for the M8 threads. I just didn't tap that one. And this is going to hold the aluminum pin. This is an M8 aluminum pin. And that's going to fit in between these brackets once we have it assembled. We'll be using some bolts here. This is a M8 bolt. It has a shoulder on it. You can see it right there. A little shank or shoulder. And this is a socket head cap. This is an M6 millimeter size on it. We're also going to be using this bolt here, which is an M5, and this is 25 millimeters long. Now they have these bolts in the instructions labeled with A15, A9, A8, whatever the case may be. And there is, I found one inconsistency when I was looking at it, and I'll talk about that when I get to the other bracket. But yeah, these are M3 millimeters on the top, 25 millimeter long M5s. And 25 millimeters is the entire length, like this. All right. Typically a manufacturer will measure the length of a bolt when you're ordering them by the thread depth, right? And that thread depth is about 20 millimeters, eh, maybe 21, 21 and a half. So if you're used to measuring that way, then yeah, you need to measure it this way because this is the right one. And you can see when I measure it that way, it does say 25 or 24.9, close enough. One thing about these bolts is they're very dirty out of the bag. This is the bag that it came out of, and it's kind of dirty. I don't know if you can tell that well here, but they put a coating on these bolts like a lot of black anodized, or not anodized, but black oxide bolts to keep them from rusting up when they're sitting around the warehouses before they ship to somebody's home where they can use them. Yeah, they can get pretty dirty when they've got that coating on them. In fact, just these bolts that you see here that I've cleaned off, I got this much off of it. And you don't have to do this. You can just put them on if you want. But the reason I do it is I like to keep things clean while I'm assembling. I mean, if possible, unless I'm in a big hurry and I'm in a production, then yeah, maybe I wouldn't be doing it. The problem is you get it on your fingers when you're putting them in and starting them. And then you get it on your wrenches. And then you got it all over everything. And you got it on your brackets now because you handled them. So it's just one of those things that you might want to do before you start your assembly. Because there's not that many in the assembly, I think. But totally up to you. Just thought I'd point that out. Now... Let's start with this. Again, we're using two of these brackets. Very simple the way this goes on. Just have to make sure your orientation is correct. And that means that we will be using the side of the bracket that has these counter sunk holes in it. And we're using the bracket. This pocket hole piece is going to be facing that way towards each other once we mount them. And you can see these two holes here line up with these two holes on each side like this. And then we're going to go ahead and put them on that way. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of lay it here and grab these 24 millimeter M5s. And they do have an M3 metric size wrench. And I'll be using my wrench on these like this. And we just stick them through and put it on. Very simple stuff here. Not rocket science, as they say. I'm going to go ahead and run this through until it kind of gets close to where I need it to be. Like that. And we'll get the other one started. Obviously, we don't want to tighten any of this stuff down until we get all the bolts started. And I still have to put that aluminum pin, that M8 size pin in here. So I have to be mindful of that. Because you don't want to put these brackets on and forget to put your pin on. And you got to take one of them back off. So and this is where I would go ahead and install the pin. And again, we have that pocket hole sitting in there. It holds the pin. Put it in like this. We're good to go. And again, it's, we're loose down here, so we're going to have room to get this bracket on. We're just going to slide it on, get the hole oriented properly. And we'll just slide this puppy on like this. Like that. Pretty easy, right? Let's go ahead and roll these guys in. If I tighten this all the way down, the holes don't quite line up. See that? You can see the holes in there, but they're not really lining up. But I can move this back because we have the room and get them centered where they need to be. See if I can get them centered and hold them there. Something like that. All right. Just lay it back down. Again, this is pretty easy stuff. As long as you have a wrench to do it with, 
you are golden. So I'll start this one. And we'll get this one going. Run them down. Drop the wrench. Run them down again. Sometimes when you do this double twist thing, it gets away from you. <laughs> I'm just going to snug this up a little bit to see where I'm at. Like that. Good. So this is going to allow, because remember we had to move this out to get these bolts in. You can see how nice that sits too, nice and flush. But this allows this aluminum pin here, or rod, or whatever you want to call it, to spin. Hear that? I don't know if you can see that. So it spins around in there and can move. So it's got some play to it, which is good. That's what we want. So because I have it that way, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. I'll come back with a regular wrench, like the ones that you usually see me use for when you torque down. One of the ones that are, have the L shape to them to torque these down a little bit more. You don't want to torque it too much. Remember, this is aluminum, and you don't want to strip these threads out. That would be a bad thing. Now, the only thing left to do here on this assembly is take our two 40 millimeter 8, M8 rather, bolts, and put them in here. Pretty simple. Now, there is a requirement in the instructions that when we put this on here, I'm going to use my big 6 mil for this, that you need to get this bolt to protrude 10 millimeters off the bottom. See how it's coming out of the bottom there? I want 10 mils there. So what I'll do is I'll preset this to 10 millimeters, and I'll lock it down like that, 10 mil, and then I'll kind of just watch it as I'm adjusting it. In fact, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> well, maybe just a little more. Okay. And of course, you can fine tune this, I'm assuming, once we have this mounted, wherever we're going to be mounting it to, we can just fine tune this. So right here, we're at 10 millimeters. All right. Do the same thing with the other one. Run it in. And I can just kind of gauge from this one here that I've already put in where it's going to end up. I would say, let's see, right about there. Check it again. And this is something easy to adjust if it's not right at first. It's, yeah, it's just a hair over. But again, I don't think it's going to be that particular when we do this stuff. All right, so there we go. We've got this plate assembled. And this, again, will be the VESA mount. So we're going to be mounting this to the monitor this way. So let's say this is the back of the monitor. It's going on like that. Because we have a hole here, we have a hole here. And these are 100 millimeter, I believe. At least I hope they are, because that's what I need. <laughs> these are 100 millimeter holes. Now, they might not be that hole. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is... Wow, let's see if this is 100. Let's do it on this side. It's a little easier. Yeah, that's 100. So 100 diagonals, this is where the bolts are going to be going for that. But we'll get to that when we get there. So there's the completed assembly for our VESA mount part of the bracket. When we come back, we'll start assembling the profile bracket side. Now that we have our monitor side mount assembled, we'll go to the profile side. And it has a side to it that you need to pay attention to because we have four countersunk holes here. And we have this these bends on the end of it. Now, we're going to be putting these flathead bolts in here, or screws. They're M5. They're 10 millimeters long, and they're called A15s in the instructions. But that's a misprint. These are not A15s. They're A9s. A15 is actually a designation for the bracket itself. So it's just a misprint in there. You want to make sure that these are A9s because these are only 10 millimeters long, and they have to be short because, and that's one of the ways I figured out which ones they were, is this block that we're going to be putting on it here like so, it's going to be sitting like this, in that orientation. It has some very shallow, well not very shallow, but it has shallow holes in it. So it's easy enough just take, if you have one, your little calipers, it has a little thing that sticks out of the bottom so we can measure depth. You just put it down there, put it flush on there, pull it back out, and you see I have about nine and a half millimeters there. So this is a 10 millimeter long bolt, so it all makes sense, right? And that's the only one that was 10 millimeters long in the pack. And also being a flathead, it has to be a flathead because of our 
countersunk holes, of course. So, easy enough to figure that out. Let's go ahead and put it on. And again, the orientation, this is actually the down. This will be hanging down because this is going to be sitting on top of our profile. So we're going to put this on like this. And then this guy is going to be fitting on there, kind of like this, but we'll see that in a minute once I get it attached. So again, let's go ahead and put these. I'm just going to lay this flat on top like this, make it a little easier to get everything going. This is an M3 hex head for your wrench size. And I'll be using my little wrench here. It'll stay on. Now that that's done, you see we have our bracket securely mounted and our holes all filled up with these nice flathead screws. And these are, are going to be blind screws or bolts because once we attach this to the profile, we won't be able to see it anymore. Now, there is a requirement to put this bolt in here. And this bolt goes in this way, and it needs to be 24 millimeters, according to the instructions, in. And this is the same bolt we used on the other assembly. This is a 40 millimeter long socket head cap with the shoulder on it. And that's supposed to be 24 millimeters protruding, which might be even with this edge, I'm thinking. Let's see. Let's go ahead and run it in where I think it might need to be. I'm going to actually just run it in where I'm looking. I'm kind of eyeballing it here. See if it gets level with these guys. And I'll do a measurement and see where we're at. That's actually 20 millimeters. So they say 24. Probably went too far. It was pretty quick with the thread that we have on here, I think. Okay, yeah. 23... 24. Yep. A little bit more. That's about 24 right there. So that was easy, right? <laughs> There's still two things we're going to want to do here. And that is, I'm going to use my profile as an example here, that this is your monitor stand profile of 4080. And we're going to set this on top. Now you could use also a single 4040, but I'm using a 4080 because that's what I'll be using when I actually do the installation. And I'm going to go ahead and put in, remember we get some more bolts for this. These are 10 millimeter, I believe, or 15. Let's see what we got here, 15. 15 M8 socket head cap. And we have these nice spring ball roll-in T-nuts we can use. There's a couple of ways to do that. I could just pre-attach it and slide it on, or I could just slide these in the way I want them to look in my profile, which is just as easy. Do that. Now I'm gonna set this on top of the profile, like so. Just like that. Now, because this is sticking up, I'm gonna have to lay it down to do this because the bolt, or not the bolt, but this actual flange here would be putting pressure, keeping it off. So I'm just gonna kinda look sideways in here, get one going. Find my other one. Oh, look, that was, wow, that's almost right on. I'm getting lucky here on this build. So I'll go ahead and put this on like just give it a, you know, a little tighten up just so it stands up like it should. I'm not going to clamp down on it because I'm really not going to be using this profile. And there we have it. So that's how that's going to sit on our profile. You see it sticking out, how far it sticks out there. And again, I'm thinking this bottom one, and we'll see once we get it assembled, is going to be a, an adjustment. So when I push the, pull this in or out, it's going to take the Vesta plate Let's go ahead and set it in there and see what it's looking like. Like that. Yeah, okay. So you see how that's sitting there? And I can use this, because we have this gap in here, we have that much travel in where it's sitting right now. Remember, we pre-did these bolts. If you saw the first part where we built this part of the bracket, 10 millimeters deep on the inside there. So they're sitting, making contact with these ledges here as we set this on. There it is. So if I want to raise this up, I would obviously screw those in more. Or if I want to set it down, I would screw them out and it would sit flatter. Or it would slip lower rather, not flatter. So this is how we're going to do a height adjustment. And just as I thought before, if you look down inside of here, you can see our bolt down here. And if I twist this bolt in or out, it's going to change the angle 
as much angle as we're going to need to be changed when we're actually mounting a monitor. And it's going to allow me to change that angle on it so I can tilt it in and out. Pretty cool, huh? So I got adjustments here. And not only that, because these are two bolts sitting here, right? If I adjust one further down than the other, it'll give me a twisting motion. A little bit of a twist there. So I can do this as far as the, you know, the monitor is sitting here. I can angle them that way too. So I can go up or down. I can do this. I can go in or out. That's pretty cool. I'm already liking this actually. It's pretty cool looking as far as, yeah, what it's going to be able to do. But when we come back, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get the rest of them assembled. And then we're going to take a look at how this is really going to operate because there's a couple other goodies that we're going to be putting here. Remember, we still have some small set screws here and these larger set screws that we're going to be using to make more adjustments. So when we come back, we'll have the rest of these assembled and then we'll talk about how these are going to be working. The brackets are all assembled now. And a couple of things I uh, ran across while I was doing final assembly and look at some of the bolts and stuff that were left over. And yeah, I found a couple of things I want to go over with you here. First off, once this is a, a finished assembly and this is on your monitor, you saw this before it was finished. We had our two socket head cap bolts in here, but we didn't have these set screws in here. See these? These are the 20 millimeter long 5 mil or M5 set screws, and they have a 2.5 millimeter head size on it as far as the wrench that you're going to be using on it. That's what they are. So they're used, once this is sitting in the channel, they're used to adjust your monitor laterally. So I'm going to set this back in here. Remember, these guys are for the height, these two guys here. And the one here is for the angle, so we can rock it in and out. So I'm going to put this back on here and give you a better look at what those set screws are doing. So based on what I do with those set screws there, I can adjust this laterally in very small increments. I mean, you can really get this dialed in. And then we'll use these bolts, or you used them before, it depends on how you're doing this. You can do it in any order you want, I suppose. But you can use those bolts to push down on one end or the other and get a little bit of a twist angle on it if you need to. So it'll still sit there like that, but just be off angle a little bit so it dials in to where you need it to go. So a lot of adjustment here. I really like the way this is working. One thing I found was the set screws, first off in the instructions, that was the last thing you put in was these set screws. Not sure why, but I guess it really doesn't matter. But I did run across something that I think, remember these guys, these big M8 set screws we saw before. I was wondering why they were even in the kit because we had the socket head caps and that's what the directions or instructions were showing us. But you could use these too. I have one set up for that over here. I put one of those in instead of that bolt that you see over here. Now I think the reason they put these in here is there can be an interference issue with this bolt. If the height requirement of your monitor has the bolt head, this big socket head cap, sitting in like this, and it's, it's kind of in the way of this set screw. See that? It doesn't look like it, I think, on the video when you look at it because of the angle down, but if, you, if I can rock it, to where you can see it evenly. There's actually a little interference here. So when you take your wrench, this is a two and a half inch, or two and a half mil, not inch. <laughs> you can still kind of, see how I have to rock it up to get it in there? And if I really want to tighten this down, I would not do that because this is off angle. I would go get my ball end 2.5 millimeter wrench and tighten it down then because then I, I think I could get it in there without any problem. But you can see how there is a possibility of an interference issue here. But if over here, with this M8 set screw, yeah, that's never going to happen, no matter where you are with the height adjustment on your monitor. And the set screws, by the way, these big ones, they are five millimeter wrenches. And they go in, obviously, just like the other bolts. So they'll also give you, let me show you this, a little bit, not a whole lot, more room as far as the adjustment on height. See the difference there? So this is just as long as the bolt is. See the ends, I'm kind of matching them up there on the ends. But if you look there, see where the shoulder is on the socket head cap? Well, we've got thread there now. So it gives us more range for up and down, if you need it. So I think I'm gonna replace all these with these. And I suppose it really doesn't matter on this part because I don't think you'll ever have interference because remember, this is hanging down behind the profile like that. So you got plenty of clearance here. I don't see any issues with that. 
So I'll just, plus it's black, right? So it'll it'll match everything. Unless you have silver rails, then yeah, I guess it doesn't matter at that point, which I do. <laughs> I don't have black. So anyway, I wanted to show you those couple things, the different adjustments we can make with the set screws going this way. And yeah, other than that, we're good to go. One more thing. There is, if you have a monitor that has a 200 millimeter VESA requirement on it, you can actually use this plate to mount these guys like this. Do these holes line up this way or they line up this way? Hang on. Okay, they're lining up this way. Okay, so you see we have some countersunk holes here. If I can hold this bracket steady long enough to show you. Those silver holes we saw before in the bracket, you see they're lying out there. So we would use it like this. So once we had this bolted to this and this bolted to our monitor, we would still come in and do the same thing and set it in to this that's already on our profile, like so. So you could use the big one. So if you have a requirement for a 200 millimeter VESA mount, you need to state that and yeah, you can make this happen. And of course, you can see the threaded holes here. These are M6s and they even include in the kit some M6 flathead, 10 millimeters. So they would fit in here like this. And then they would go into little holes there that already tapped all right cool huh other than that we are done with the assembly now it's just a matter of getting these mounted to the back of my monitors and putting them on the other bracket that i already have mounted on one of the arms so when we come back we'll be doing that i'll be setting it on here and then we'll probably do some different camera angles so that as i'm turning these bolts and stuff we'll see how the monitor is moving on us before I use the Vario mounts on the monitors, I want to do a brief flyby here and show you guys what's going on with the current OEM setup. Now this is a SimLab triple monitor mount and it does have the quad monitor mount on it also. So obviously I have four monitors. And I also have some extended pieces here that go much higher than the original ones. These are about 1700 millimeters high. And the reason is because when you have motion systems like this over here, you have to have some clearance for your monitors if you're going to run monitors, obviously. So what we have is these brackets here for mounting our monitors. We have two bolts at the top here, and we have two at the bottom. They are attached to this 4080 series by some blind bolts, some flatheads that are back in here that go into both of these channels. Can't see them, obviously, because everything's in the way. Now these mounts here have some adjustment in them and I'm going to have this one loose just to show you some differences as we start going through the video here. And I can adjust this as far as the tilt this way a little bit. If you watch the bolt in there, you can see that the monitors can actually move a bit there. See that? And then I could tighten it, hold it with my hand. I'm just moving it with my hand down here. Hold it with my hand and then tighten everything down to get the angle I want over here. That's the theory anyway. And of course, I leave, you want to mount this bracket, just like we're going to mount the other one, as close to where we need to be as possible. But it's going to be a lot easier with the Vario because I can take it on and off at will and just adjust the bracket again. So here I can't do that. I have to take the monitor completely off with the brackets, and that's four bolts every time I want to do that. But I did that to originally install this, got it dialed into where I needed to be as far as the length. I even cut my profiles up because... I can still go to a 32 if I wanted to, but I had 32s at one time, and I prefer the 27s. Of course, that's completely subjective as far as what you want to see and how things work out for you and your driving positions. So we want to make sure this has to be where it is, and I gave myself a, a lot more bias towards that direction in these slots than towards that direction because I knew that that's where I would be doing my fine-tuning. Now, I'm going to go around the side here, and this monitor over here is still tight. And you can see this is a very thin bezel on these monitors, which I really like. And I'm overlapping the bezel on the monitor behind it. So I'm kind of bumping the monitor into the middle monitor. See how that works? So I've only got this much bezel showing when I'm looking at the picture or looking at the screens when I'm driving. Of course, when I'm in a tin top car, you notice the A pillar 
more than these kind of just disappear. I don't even notice them because the A pillar is what's getting in my way when I'm driving. So over here, you can see I have a gap in here because I have it loose. And you can just put your hand down on the bottom of the monitor and kind of tap it forward or lift up on it and wiggle it so I can close that gap up. And I'm going to try to do that now. Okay, so I'm closed at the top. I'm touching at the top now. But you can see I have some gap down there in the middle towards the bottom. So it's not really straight. So if I, I can still tilt this. And when I do that and get some even space between it, then I'll try to wiggle it as I'm tilting it. If I can keep the monitor from moving. Remember, I'm on wheels here. So I'm trying to get the bracket so it won't move. So that looks pretty good right there. But if you'll notice, look how, how the monitor is. And I can't really do anything about that with this current bracket system. And the, the funny thing is that over here, the monitor, when I get it straight and right, is actually a little lower on the edge. So one's higher, one's lower. And again, once I'm driving, I really don't notice this stuff. And I could get this pretty close to where I want it to be. But there's always an element of sag in monitor setups, triple monitor setups. You have to compensate for when you're putting this stuff on. And I use... You want to make sure this guy, and we're going to do that anyway when we put the new mounts on, we're going to make sure this is as level as I can get it. And there's inherent sag in this because of the weight of the monitor. These are not very heavy monitors, only about eight pounds, but some of them are even heavier than that. But this is my level right now. It's a little bit canted that way, right? So I could actually come up here and get it just a little more level. In fact, if I press on it, I can make that bubble move a little bit. See that? but there's going to be some inherent sag. When I pull this monitor off of this, then it'll probably go back up a little bit and be even more biased towards that. So I kind of bias them towards too high because I know no matter what monitor you put on these things and how short your arms are, it's still going to want to kind of bend down or sag a little bit. Even though all my bolts are torqued good, got bolts on the top and the bottom, everything's set up like it should be, and then I tighten them down good, it's still going to sag a little bit. It's just, it is what it is. So I'm going to, now that we see how this is working, I'm going to go ahead and pull this monitor off and we'll get a better look at the bracket as I'm switching them out and go from there. Now we're ready to put on the plate to the back of our monitor, the monitor part of our plate. But first I want to show you the original one that came off with the countersunk holes there. We have four of them and they lined up with the 4080 series. I'm using this as an example, like this. And then, of course, the monitor went on like that. Right. I had to use some standoffs for this. And that's the reason I'm really showing you this. The standoffs allow this plate to, because the plate would not fit this way, because it's too long, I used standoffs to kick it up so that I didn't have to worry about it getting hung up in here. So that's what the standoffs are for. And they used to ship the standoffs with other kits as far as when they were doing a triple monitor setup. At least mine came with them. So that worked like a champ. The standoffs allowed everything to work together here. But we're not going to have to use the standoffs here. But before I get there, I want to show you this plate here. And this is a the plate they send with the 100, 200 triple monitor mounts now, or just regular monitor mount, just a single. If you want a 100, 200 mount, this is what you'll get. Now this is obviously a lot bigger, and it has another issue though. Still, if I set this on here like this, now these are, let me show you these holes here, here, and here, and here are 100 millimeter spaced holes. So that's the VESA 100 pattern, and they line up perfectly well. But you can see if I put this on here, I have a problem. <laughs> it's pivoting on this piece right here. So even with these standoffs in here, I can't get it to stop doing that. So I have to think of something else, which would be another standoff. So if I put another standoff in here. You can see I'll lay that on there. And there you go. No more pivoting. Now it'll sit flat. And we'll have that standoff. But we will have a bit of a gap in here, which really I would not be too concerned about as long as you use the proper standoffs because these are pretty strong. But again, we're putting more leverage on the threads that are in this metal piece that is under this cheapy plastic cover they put on these things. So yeah, it is going to put a little more leverage on it. So it is something to be thinking about anyway. I'd rather not have to do this. So with the new brackets, the good news is we don't. I'll pull this standoff off, put my thing back up here, and I'm going to pull these standoffs out. 
because we're not going to need them anymore. But always save them for something else, right? Because this mount is curing all those problems with this monitor. And I'm thinking most other monitors because it's small enough that it'll fit in any of them that I've seen so far. It doesn't matter what the shape is back here, up to a point, of course, because I'm still concerned if I set this down in here flat like this, which is good because now my threads don't have, are not pulling as much leverage on the little sheet metal pieces they use in here for mounts, which, by the way, is another reason to not mount your monitors on a motion system because they obviously are going to take a lot of stress in that area. But now I have this mounted. My only question is, can I come in with this mounted to my 4080 series and fit? I'm going to kind of go like this because we would be going in at an angle on it, I'm sure. So I'm just going to kind of go in there like that. And there you go. Perfect. No worries. See how that's sitting? Oh, I wanted to slip off. <laughs> so this is going to work out fine. I should be able to get in and just hang the monitor, which is kind of nice, because now I'm just hanging the monitor in instead of with this old bracket, because it's already attached to this, right? I'm bringing the monitor up to it. So you got to hold the monitor and then get your screws started at the same time. Of course, if somebody's helping you, it's a lot easier. But if you're by yourself and you're putting those screws in through the holes, get them all started into each one of these slots that are in here, then yeah, it becomes a little bit tricky and worrisome, really, at the end of the day, because you were thinking, hmm, I don't want to drop this $800 monitor or whatever your monitor costs. So I'm going to go ahead and install these. Now, these are M5 screws. I'm using these guys. See, it has a little socket head cap on it. The ones that came in the kit were a Phillips head screw. And I like these better than it came out of these anyway. And these were the original ones that shipped with the first kit. So I'm going to use this. And this is a 2.5 millimeter here. And this is going to be very simple, obviously. Just line the hole up, start the screw, and there you go. Now you want to make sure they're long enough to grab enough thread there. And that feels long enough to me. I'm going to get a good quarter inch of this thread in there, even though it may not look like it on the video there. It's pushing down a little bit when I put a little tightening on it. Like that. Again, once this is mounted, it's not pulling this way on the monitor. It's pulling this way, so it's a, a lot better off that way. So I'm going to go ahead and snug these up because I don't have to move these anymore. And again, now we have the leverage a lot closer to the little metal piece in here. You don't want to get these too tight. If you strip one of these out, yeah, that's not a good thing. Then you're going to have to pull the whole thing apart and try to re-tap it if you can. So we have this mounted now. Pretty simple, right? And I'm looking at this also, this part of it. I'm going to slide it in here, and I want to see if it hits the top of the monitor, and it does, before this bar sits, seats down into the bottom here, it's hitting the top here. So I'm going to have to screw these guys in. Probably, I'm thinking another 40 mil or so to get it where I want it, I think. And it's going to be an adjustment depending on whatever monitor you have. So I'm going to roll these out. Kind of eyeball it a little bit and see what we get there. Because this bar does not have to sit into the bottom of that channel. It just needs to be in the slot, right? So now when I do it, I probably went too far that time, but yeah, now i got plenty of room. But you also want to look at what you have going on back here with this adjustment. Because this adjustment is going to be used for, like we saw before, I'm going to turn this in and out to get the angle that I want to on the monitor when it's sitting over there on the mount. This is really a slick system. It gets better as you go along. <laughs> you know, when you're putting it together, when we did before in the first part of this video, you know, it was, it was cool looking and all that, but yeah, this is nice and secure on here. It just, the system in general is going to be so much easier to adjust than what we saw before when I showed you how I had to do adjustments with this thing, right? So we got this set up on the monitor. What we're going to do now is go over and install this part onto the support, our 4080 support. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like setting it into the support itself. All right, so you can see I already have the monitor hung up in here. I'm going to take it off and do it again so you guys can see it, and I'll show you a close-up of that too. Only thing I'd be concerned about or pay attention to is these set screws on the side of this bracket. 
you want to back those out so you have as much room as you can in between here so when you set it down into the groove of the channel over there that you don't hang up on one of these little set screws here so it just gives you more room to do it with and that's what i did on this the one that's already on the back of the monitor so i'm just going to pull that out it's so easy to do i can do this over and over again <laughs> compared to what i used to do right so you can see on this one i have those set screws backed out pretty far so it's just a matter of getting in close to it and getting your hands underneath it and just kind of looking at the bar as i'm going in and where that groove is and just kind of tilt it over towards it and set it in just like that that is easy it's much easier than what I used to have to do, which is get in with kind of hold the monitor up in the air while I'm putting some screws in. I had put four screws in to get it secured enough to where I could rock around the back and then start tightening things up and adjusting things. But yeah, this is much easier. I really like the solution already. Now all we're going to do is change the camera angles a bit so I can give you as much information as I can as how I'm adjusting this and getting it close to where I need to be on this center monitor over here. So I thought I'd show you guys how this adjustment is working as I'm adjusting one of my monitors over. I have it sitting so that we can watch the edge from one side and then I'll show you what I'm doing over here on this side with our little screws. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do, and I've already done that, and that is get this lined up this way, straight up and down. So right now it is as straight up and down as I think I want it. I can still tweak that. Remember we have the little screw that you can't see in the shot underneath here on the bottom. And I can actually turn that in or out. And what I want to do is usually take pressure off of it and then turn it in or out to wherever I wanted it to be and then let it sit back down. Now that's, that's easy enough to do. So what I'm going to do first is I've got my set screws over here kind of moved out of the way because I'm going to try to move it this way and close the gap over there. So I'm just going to kind of do that with my hands, not really with the screws at this point. You can just kind of rock it over. See how that kind of closes the gap up there? So I'm getting closer and closer to the gap. I'm still a little bit shy over here as far as the height goes. And I think I'm going to go get my height first. And that's these long screws here. These are M5s, these are long set screws. And I'm just going to kind of pick those up. And you can see as I do one, the whole thing tilts. So you have to be mindful of that you move one, you're going to have to go over and move the other one also. Like that to bring it back level and kind of watch it. It wouldn't hurt to have a level on the monitor itself if you wanted to. But what I want to do is get that corner all the way perfectly level with this one. If I can achieve that, that's something I have never been able to achieve with this monitor mount to date. So let's go ahead and tighten this one up again. I'm lifting that one up a little bit more. And I'm kind of eyeballing it over here where you can't see me doing it. And then I'll bring the other one over a little. I'm also going to look in the crack here, go around to the front, and I'll take a look at where this other camera is and see how I'm looking. It looks like I need to come up and over that way. So that's what I'm going to do. By turning this one, it's going to cant it back over. See how it canted it over? But now I'm still too low. So I'm going to go back over here. It's just a game <laughs> that you have to play here. In fact, I'm going to go a little proud because I know it's going to come back down when I adjust it for over here to try to get my gap nice and smooth again or, or where I want it to be. So I'm bringing it back now. And it looks like an even gap there from over here. Let's see what I got in the front here where that camera is. Yeah, that's looking... I need to come up a little bit more on the top. And I can do that because it's still a little proud over there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one. And that will bring, see how it brought that in? And now I'm perfectly level with the top. Let's see what our gap looks like. Gap is looking pretty good. I can go just a little bit more. This is so cool to be able to dial this in like this. It's the first time I've been able to do this. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I like what I'm seeing here. So once that's set, I've got my gap sitting pretty exactly the way I want it to. Then I'll come in and I'll hit these little set screws and these are 2.5 millimeters. I'm using a ball wrench here. So I've got to kind of get a little angle on this side. So I'll go ahead and run this guy in. Now, if I had not enough screw set screw here to run this all the way in, that would mean this bracket was still too far away this way. And it looks like I might be at that point. It's still in there. You can still run it in there as long as it's in there. It's putting pressure, there we go. It's putting pressure. 
on this piece here on both sides equally. That's what we want. It looks like I have got it there now. Yeah. So there it is. I think that's what I want. Let's take another look around the front here. Yeah, I might tweak that just a little more. But I want to shoot this so you guys can get an idea of what's going on. And the tops are still just a hair off. But I, again, this is so cool because I can go back, loosen these screws again, and then do some more micro adjustment here and just get that thing perfectly dialed in against the other monitor. Where before, I didn't have these kind of adjustments available to me in the older bracket system. So I would say that, yeah, this is a worthy upgrade over any other bracket system I've ever used when you try to mount a monitor and adjust it. So here are all the monitors attached. Everything is tightened down now. All of my final tuning has been done. And I've got all the set screws for the lateral adjustment are now squeezing this block here so they can't move this way anymore. The adjustments went pretty good. Remember, we have to adjust here too because of the way this monitor mount sits on my profiles. It sits a little lower than the other mounts did. The other ones were sitting higher and they're sitting out further that way. So that meant I had to do some adjustment with the arm here, this piece here that comes out. I had to adjust that further this way so I could still bump it into my middle monitor or center monitor and cover the bezels the way I like to. But yeah, this all lined up pretty good. I started with the center, got it completely centered here on the main bar so I knew I was dead center. And then I worked for the side monitors after that was done. So once this got centered, then you can work on the side ones. And it all kind of comes together here. And everything is nice and tightened down now, torqued down. Again, I did have to. You can see the old marks. See where it used to be? That's where it used to be before I moved it. So that's a good, I don't know, 20 millimeters maybe? Yeah, something like that. Same thing over here. You can see the mark on this side. Had to move it that way to get what I wanted. And I'll show you what I got on the inside here. This is the first time I've had these monitors sitting at this level with each other. Look at the line on the top of that. And you can see there's a little, little teeny air gap in there. If I move the camera back and forth, you can see it. But in the middle, if I do the same thing, there is none. And at the bottom, there is some too, I believe. Just a hair down there. And the reason is, these plastic bezels obviously are not perfectly straight. There's no way that's going to happen with plastic. So... It's as good as it's going to get because I'm bumping it tight in the middle here. So there's no way I can do anything as long as I got a little bit of, a little bit of air down here and a little hair, bit of air up there. There's really not much else I can do because we're tight in the middle and that's where I need to be tight. Also important here is not only just the level, how these things are matching, but the way this bezel is covering the other bezel. I use this as an overlap, as you can see, so that I've only got this much bezel showing when I'm running the car and it covers the other part of the bezel. Very common to do it this way. But the line here between this bezel and this, and the little, I don't know how well you're gonna see it in this video because it's dark in here, but the line is perfectly straight with each other all the way up, and that's the first time I've ever had that too. Now this monitor, just to show you the inconsistencies on these bezels, on the bottom, there's a little bit you can see there on this piece. Of course, this is the rounded part, so we want the flat part. If I follow this all the way up on the flat, it's tight all the way. I can't see any light at all. Just a hair of it in the very top. And again, at the top, they're curving away anyway. So that you expect to see a little bit. This one, because this bezel, the plastic on this one, is straight compared to this plastic on the one on the other side. And again, the bezel here where it's covering, overlapping the back bezel, is perfectly straight. That line is perfectly straight all the way up. And of course, we're straight on our little lines that cross across the top of the bezel. Here, I use that as a reference, this little line here, and use that as a reference for how they're lined up. Yeah, just beautiful. I've never had these this straight <laughs> and this lined up. This is really cool. So yeah, this is definitely something. If you have a triple monitor stand and you're, you can't get your monitors lined up perfectly straight, this is the ticket right here. This will cure your problems. If you're like me and you just want it to be lined up as perfectly as you can get it, this is the way to go. They did a real good job at SimLab with this assembly. The parts were all there. And yeah, this the anodization is nice. All the machining is good. All the threads worked well. What more could you ask for? 
So yeah, this is something that I'm glad I took the time to do because I'm really happy with the result now. And this is one of those reviews where I really don't need to do a driving segment because I've already seen the results and yeah, it's going to be even better, obviously, when I'm in the car driving. Final thoughts on the Vario VESA mount kit from the guys at SimLab. As someone who has been running a triple monitor setup for a long time now, I know how it can be a fight to get all three of them perfectly lined up the way you want them to. So I was very interested in getting my hands on this new adjustable monitor mount system from SimLab. There are a fair bit of parts that make up the mount's assembly. All of these parts had a good finish on them. The red anodized brackets give this mount a nice contrast when compared to the black flat plates that are used for mounting to the monitor and the profile of the monitor stand. Assembling one of these brackets was not complicated. I was able to get them completed in no time at all. They have several available adjustments on them. You can move the monitor laterally, vertically, and you can adjust the angle as it faces you. Using the vertical adjustment screws, you can also cant the monitor to compensate for any sag in the profile arm that you have it mounted to. The Vario brackets also make it very easy to attach your monitors to the stand's profile sections. The monitor just drops into the U-shaped red bracket and you adjust from there. I was able to get my monitors as close to perfectly aligned as possible when dealing with less than perfectly straight plastic casements you find on most monitors available today. I do like the engineering that SimLab has put into the Vario mounts. It is complicated in the way it works, but easy to actually use. It's such a good result, SimLab has a patent pending on this design to protect all the hard work that went into its development. If you have a triple monitor setup and you want to get those panels lined up as perfectly as you possibly can, I would be taking a long, hard look at this solution from SimLab. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.